I won't go through the problems with basic fit latrines. You all know those. <laughs> but the ones I'm focusing on here mainly are the um, issue of um, spread of water uh, from fecal sludge and the inclusion of uh, pathogens and other contaminants that spread into the ground from that. And uh, what yes. what we are looking at is um, using a technique that is uh, taken from the process of membrane distillation uh, to improve on this situation. The can't see what I'm presenting. idea is
Consequently, uh, it's very resistant to clogging and fouling. And the same appears to be true for the slide itself. We have reused membranes uh, with the same performance um, after, after the first time that we get the second time. However, fecal sludge is different from salt water, obviously. Uh, drying is different from desalination, and privies are different from industrial process where we might use membrane distillation. So we have a lot of work to do. Uh, our work has been on looking at initial feasibility, characterization of the process, material and condition optimization, and then practicality and scale up. We have not completed all those processes. We've been on this for one year now. The initial feasibility, we um, got a free sample of this uh, type of membrane um, in the form of a glove, a, a plastic glove that uh, we took, cut the thumb off of, filled it with uh, wastewater sludge, and uh, let it dry at 15 degree Celsius temperature difference, and it dried within 24 hours uh, to uh, half of its original moisture content, and the water on the outside, adjacent and absorbent, had it, uh, the same conductivity as distilled water. Um, that simple test led us to uh, uh, Grand Challenge Grant and a lot of other work. Uh, so uh, here's our setup quickly. Um, we have what I call envelopes that include a sludge inside a uh, membrane that could be PTFE. We've used uh, PVDF and polypropylene materials as well, uh, one or several layers depending on the manufacturer. Uh, we put polyethylene on the other side. Um, the envelope is filled with uh, sludge. We've used uh, generally anaerobically digested sludge because it's very reproducible. And uh, we can take that envelope and as it dries with a slight temperature difference, which we control with a hot plate or a water bath, we can weigh the envelope to see how much moisture we've lost. And we run controls with uh, water in the envelope and other things like that. Um, the other situation is more difficult, which is when the sludge is in contact with water on the other side of the membrane instead of air. For that, we've uh, put together a system where we have our sludge on one side of the membrane in a two-sided glass cup or plastic column. We keep the outside, we keep it continually mixed as it dries. On the other side, we have cool water, so that's what our system looks like. We have thermocouples right next to the membrane on both sides, so we know the temperature gradient. And uh, we can either weigh, take samples, or measure the volume loss of the sludge on the upper side as we apply different temperature differences. This is a typical result. Um, on the left-hand side, uh, you can see uh, we keep track of sludge weight. These are the envelope type experiments. And uh, that's, in this case, with a membrane, without a membrane. And you can see on the other side the percent solids that is increasing as the material dries. The left-hand scale shows how much weight we lose. It's very significant. Uh, the percent solids in these cases are, I don't think they're very accurate because uh, the person left didn't actually measure solids on the original sample by the conventional method. Uh, if you look at the sample in this case, it is completely dry. And um, that's after a very short time period. Uh, this graph shows the effective temperature difference as you expect and as is predicted by membrane distillation models. Um, the Increase in temperature uh, causes faster drying. But you can see we're running um, zero degrees C uh, in contact with air across the membrane. There we get a drying just because of the vapor pressure difference. Uh, two degrees Celsius speeds things up um, a fair amount, but you can see a significant difference. Um, well, that, uh, uh, yeah. And so the um, and the 10 degrees Celsius difference is, is, we have a hard time controlling temperature difference at less than two degrees, so that's what we we'll generally run our experiments with. But uh, it's going to be much less than that at field scale. We know that, we expect that this process will take a lot longer than this time scale in the field. In contact with water, the more elaborate experiment that we run, you can see that the uh, sludge weight still 
decreases significantly, it's down to about one third of its original amount. It takes longer, this is about three weeks, but that's easily within the time scale of um, the, the latrine pit and the percent solids here is not going up to 100%, uh, but it's going up enough that um, the trend is pretty clear and uh, this experiment uh, was terminated at three weeks with two thirds of the water removed. We do get bacterial die off. We uh, haven't measured helminths or anything else. That's going to be quite a different picture when we get there, I think. Uh, we do get a decrease in the coliform of over two orders of magnitude. In understanding the process, um, we've basically looked at uh, three different um, causes of the uh, resistance to, to drying. And I'm, I've got a lot of equations in here. There's a resistance across the membrane. There's a resistance in the sludge to which release of moisture that's diagrammed on the right. And there's, uh, of course, a film resistance on the outside of the membrane as well. Um, we've taken a lot of curves. We've done a lot of modeling. And I'm going to skip through all of this. Um, but basically, we have one empirical model and we have one film model. Both of them seem to work pretty well. And um, so I think we'll skip with um, the material we've, we've done more than is shown here, but for example, here's a comparison of three different types of membranes uh, with sludge end with water. The membrane resistance is about the same for all three of the membranes, and the membrane resistance is about a third of the overall resistance. Uh, that explains why the membranes perform very similarly. There are other aspects of the membrane that are probably just as important, such as durability, such as tensile strength, um, and other things that may be secondary, but are, I'm sure, going to be important in practice. Um, for scale up, uh, we haven't done that yet, but I have some, original, some, some initial estimates based on typical dimensions of a pit and the vapor uh, loss rates that we have. First of all, if it's in contact with essentially dry soil, we can take the uh, flux rates we have for our um, <coughs> our sledging across the membrane from air. We can apply those. If the water table's higher, for example, like this, then the flux rate's going to be much lower across the part into the saturated zone. And so in that case, we would take the type of flux rate that we show in that second type of experiment. And uh, so we can, in general, develop a model that shows both uh, the worst case scenario like this and the best case and everything in between as a function of the um, water table elevation relative to pit base. And so that will go from you know, approximately zero meters to two meters. This is that graph. And so it, it shows um, here's the water table elevation uh, from zero up to two meters. And it gives us, gives us that um, as a function of the temperature difference across the membrane and the drying rate that we'll get in liters per day. So for example, you can take a, one that's in the best case scenario where it's all dry soil at a two degree temperature difference. Then we get a drying rate of about 82 liters per day, which is high. Um, we can calculate based on some rough numbers of how many liters per day might uh, be in a fecal waste that that latrine would be good for 186 people. Um, it's more likely we'll be at less satisfactory conditions, but even at a tenth of that, I think we're in pretty good shape. So this looks like it's uh, a reasonable um, model of, of what we're hoping we'll do when we scale this up. So in summary, uh, the process looks very effective in our lab tests uh, in contact with air or water. Uh, the water is lost from the sludge. The water on the other side of the membrane has, is pathogen free. It um, looks pretty good. The uh, membrane can be reused. We've done the same test on using the used membrane. Our future plans are to, we've got a lot of work to do with fecal sludge in the place of digested sludge, although I think a lot of the properties will be similar. Um, we have to scale up larger than we are. And um, some of
of the other things, so strength, feet, conductivity is going to be very important. Will also be uh, what we're going to work with. And uh, we're working with some membrane companies who are producing these types of membranes already for other applications, and they're interested in uh, trying to um, develop something that also is of low enough cost uh, so that it can be used. I will add as well, but with a good tensile strength, um, this would facilitate the withdrawal of the material from the pit uh, simply by enclosing in the uh, material and, and pulling out the entire assembly rather than shoveling or draining it out. Um, and there are a lot of other possibilities. I've only indicated a pit latrine, but that could be with or without urine diversion. It could be a pump latrine waste treated separately. Uh, could be used with some of the other technologies that people are talking about at this conference, uh, or possibly a larger scale for uh, dewatering applications, for example. Uh, so if anyone's interested in that idea, please talk to me.